So this is my microwave, 700 watt, and uh, I use 700 watt, although I've used other wattage microwaves. I like it because, one, I've used it for a long time and it cost me a tenner. Two, it, um, I find I have more control with it because sometimes 10, 20 seconds can make a massive difference to how your glass fuses and how it turns out. And I just like that kind of slower, gradual heating. So it's got three settings on it. It's got a 350, 500. They're the two that I use, but it does have max as well. I very yet rarely use max. Even with the small little kiln, even with the big kilns, I just leave it running on a lower temperature for longer. So 350 is where I always start. And with the small kilns, I've basically kept a record because I've got quite a few kilns. Um, they all look the same. So I've kept a record of which ones um, heat for what amount of time. So that's a really, really good thing to do. Um, I didn't do it for ages. And then it's like, oh, which one takes four sec minutes? Which one takes five minutes? Um, so it's really good. Keep notes about what you're doing because in the end it will save you a lot of time. Probably about a year it would have saved for me. Um, so anyway, this is my microwave. I've got on here... Um, I'm in my new studio, which is fantastic. I've been really lucky to my my mum and my stepdad got me a beautiful studio, and I've just built it all myself. So I've got fire retardant wallpaper on the bottom. Then I've got two ceramic tiles. I am going to probably put another ceramic tile on there, especially if I'm using the big kiln because it's it's the heat, and I just don't want to risk it. I have gloves. Do, do, do. make my hands look like giant hands because I've got small fingers and they just make me look huge anyway so what I'm going to do is attempt to move the lovely glass here without it moving too much because this is the point where I would drop it Inside my microwave, I've still got my turntable in my microwave because um, a microwave will heat in different ways, but you're always going to have hot spots in your in your kiln. So I've always left my turntable in there, and then these were supplied with my kiln. Um, you can just use like ceramic blocks, um, other kilnware, just to keep it off the glass. It just raises it up a little bit. And what I do is I actually angle uh, these. I work out, there's three of them, so I work out three points so that it easily balances the kiln. And then I put those on the base of the microwave. Plonk, plonk, plonk. Don't know if you can see me. Hi. Um, so that's in. I'm just going to angle you round to see if you can then see. Oh, listen, <laughs> please extension lead right so I'm just going to carefully carry this pop it on top of the little blocks that I've positioned as central in your microwave as you can and then my little lid goes on when you're putting the lid on try and be ever so careful because I have knocked pieces off putting the lid on it sounds so simple doesn't it but it's silly little things that mess up what you're doing so that's in shut the door so 350 and what I do is I run it for 350 for four minutes then I run it on the 500 for four minutes and in between the 350 and the 500 I lift the lid up slightly have a little look turn the lid because sometimes you get hot spots within your kiln where one side might heat better, like more than the other so by turning the lid very carefully you're kind of evening that out so turn the lid then after I've done the 350 and the 500 both for four minutes I do increments of like a minute but I will check it after about 30 seconds just to make sure that I'm keeping an eye on what's happening and I also again twist the lid round just so that it tries to avoid that uneven heating. So I'm going to pop the microwave on now and hopefully I'll be able to show you a bit more of what I'm doing and how I 
deal with looking at the glass. Now my microwave has just done the first four minutes at 350 so hopefully not going to hit the camera and I'm just going to show you how I have a little peep. So I have got, not that I'll need them now, but I've got trusty glasses for when I look in, in the kiln. Like I say, I probably won't need them now because I don't think it would have done too much. So after four minutes, this is how I lift the lid. Hold it tight, quick peep, put it down. Now the reason I do that, oh, I'm just gonna put it on 500 for four minutes. Now the reason that I actually only peep very carefully is it's very cold in here and um, even when you're at home, any sudden kind of temperature change can crack your glass. Um, also, so you don't want to lift it right up like this, have a look, put it down, because you're altering um, your timings as well because you may lose quite a bit of heat very quickly. So by tilting it very slightly at eye level so that you can actually have a look at it, put the lid down, pop it back on again. Um, so that you're, again, as I say, it's called thermal shock. So the last thing you want to do is inject a really cold piece of, of temperature and then find that your glass itself has decided to, uh, to crack. So we'll wait for that to finish and then I'll, I'll show you how it's done after the four minutes at 500. So it's just pinged again. And I, this time, am going to pop my little glasses on in case it's bright oh ow i've got a door here with a chain on which is really annoying so lifting it up very slightly again you'll see oh look at that it's going slightly i don't know if you can see the red of that now it's gone like a really lovely texture so again carefully turning the lid it's gone a lovely texture now i will turn the kiln round just to have a look to see what the texture's like on the other sides And you can probably see this side's not melted as much. So that's why turning the lid is really good. Now, if it was all at a really good texture and you actually like it like that, take it out. Take it out, let it cool down. And then if you find it's not textured enough, you can put it back in. But you start it right at the beginning again, especially if it's cool. So back to your 350 for four minutes, 500 for four, for four minutes, and then carry on or whatever your microwave says. So I'm now going to put it on for a minute because I want to stay here and watch how it's going because there's nothing worse than making something it's starting to look really beautiful and you're really happy with it you stick it on for too long and it just all melts completely if that's especially not what you want this one I'm just going to take as far as I I want to when I look at it next I'll have a look and see if I really like it now as I say I put it on for a minute but I will actually double check it at 30 seconds because 30 seconds can make a really big difference in going from something that's quite textured to something that is completely flat. Again, depending on what you want. So I'm going to check it after 30 seconds. I'm going to have another little peep. Again, I've got my safety glasses on so I can look at it because it is going to be redder. And again, I will turn the lid and have a look and see how that's going. So in a moment, I don't know how long it's been now because I've been talking and my clock is on my phone which is covered up by the camera. So here we go, let's have another little look. So again, a quick peep. Can you see, I'm hoping you can see that. It's really textured and again, I can see already on the other side that it's not fired as much on the other side. So again, I'm gonna turn my lid very carefully. This is starting to get a bit warm now, so I'll put my gloves on in a moment. And I'm gonna leave it for another 30 seconds. Sometimes you can do it, if you're not quite sure and you're testing your microwave out, stop it at, at quicker intervals. So do it for like 10 seconds, have a look at it do it for 20 seconds have a look at it because you need to kind of get used to your your kiln and like i say i've got different kilns and they all work even though they're the same make they're the same size my microwave obviously is the same every time they can work slightly differently 
so that's probably been going for what 10 15 seconds another little peep when you first start it off at the 350 for four minutes 500 for four minutes you can pop off make yourself coffee do what you want to do have a wee but when you're getting closer and you're doing the increments you want to stay with it because you really want to keep an eye on it i'm going to do another 30 seconds and as you saw then i opened it up i turned the lid around a little bit as well just to try and keep that that even so we'll see how it goes now i may not fully fuse this one so that it's completely smooth unless i misjudge my timings and it does it anyway because i really love the texture on some of it still but i don't want any glass that's that's not smoothed out or anything because when someone's wearing it and especially as these are very tactile and people are touching it you don't want any bits that are jagged or or uncomfortable right i'm going to check again maybe you guys can actually time <laughs> me checking and then go yeah you did that for 20 seconds okay turning the lid um i might leave it where it is let's have a look right that is getting hot so trusty gloves on these are great these gloves because they're like gauntlets i feel like i should go into a field and reenact something so all up the arm now my trouble with gloves is i love to be able to feel things feel how things are going now that has still got a little bit of texture on it and I really want to keep that. So I am now going to move this very carefully. Oh, ping. And pop it down. And this is why these gloves are a bit of a... They're lovely. But my fingers are short and I've got all these little end bits with no fingers in. And it's hard to grip. I've popped it on the ceramic tiles and hope that will actually uh, avoid any heat going on to my beautiful wooden half wardrobe thing that I've got here. Um, now with my microwave kilns, I leave them to cool completely. I don't open it now, I don't touch it, I literally leave it. Now I've no idea what the time is. I'm gonna take my phone off here very gently and have a look at what time it is. So it's 20 past one. And what I will do is time how long it takes to cool down. The reason I'm doing that is because I teach as well and it's a really good way of knowing how long my sort of teaching lesson needs to go on for so that someone can have a look at their piece once it's done. So I know it's 20 past one now and we'll time how long it takes to cool down. So I don't know if you'll be able to see it's kind of cooled, not cooled down, but it's not as red now. Now, the reason you wear these safety glasses is purely because what happens is, you know, when people say, oh, there's an eclipse or don't look at the sun. I've lost the things now. There they are. So <laughs> that's a little glimpse of my, my studio at the moment. So, um, yeah, so people say, don't look at the sun. So this is what you want, something like this, or you get green ones and everything. And it basically just protects your eyes a bit from looking at the very bright glass. Because um, obviously when it's molten, it really is like a bright red. And you don't want to cause any damage to your eyes um, by looking at it. So that's what I use. So I've got my gloves. I've got goggles if I'm working with lots of tiny weeny pieces of glass just in case I've got masks this one's a bit of a, a mess again if I'm working with um, little pieces of glass like powder powder glass or anything like that then that's a really good thing to have and use when I said to you about using the fiber paper and that little pieces can get stuck this is kind of a 3m diamond sanding block and you wet it and you can just gently sand away any rough surfaces that you may get so that is basically oh again i'm attached to the door with the chain on really annoying so um that's basically what you can get 
to uh, smooth that surface off. So I don't think there's anything else at the moment that I, I need to show you. So we're just going to leave this to completely cool down. And then when that's done, I will show you how it looks. Thanks for watching so far. Let's see how the reveal goes. So my kiln has completely cooled down now. And uh, the glass is actually uh, cooled right down so that I can I can touch it. So I'm going to be putting a mask on because, like I said to you, all of this paper, thin fire paper that you put down becomes a powder. So you can see on here, I can touch this now and all of the chalks have still remained where they were with the thin fire paper around it. So I'm a bit muffled now because of the mask. So I'm just going to go and take it over to the table and then I can show you how it's had gone. So here we are. Um, this is the final finished piece. I'm really happy with how that came out. So the next thing to do now, um, as I say, it's cool to the touch. Um, I'm not quite sure what the time is. It's about, I'm guessing it's about half two. So it took, what, an hour and 10 minutes to cool down, which is great. So what I'm gonna do is very, very carefully slightly twist it to try and release it from that paper although it doesn't stick too badly you want to kind of leave it as intact as you can because like I said it's not very good to breathe in so masks are a good thing um, so I'm just going to put that aside now because I'm finished with that and then I'll clean that off afterwards just by kind of putting it into a bag outside so this is our piece of glass you can see the green on that side and then you can see all the colours on there so i've got a little pot of water because i want to get rid of all this powder so just going to put it in the little pot and then just dry it with some kitchen oil i'm really pleased with how that's come out it's really beautiful now like i said you can use dichroic on the bottom if you want to use up all your dichroic you could even put a bottom layer of say the green then a dichroic then another color base color and then extra bits you just mix it up however you want it so uh, now that that's got all of the powder off of it the next stage is going to be actually i need that is to fix a bale onto it so the first thing i do is check for any sharp parts because like i said the last thing you want to do is someone wearing it and it's got sharp pieces so you just want to check whether it's got sharp parts if you've got anything that is sharp you can dip it in here and you can rub very carefully on there i haven't got any sharp parts so a oh, little bit there so i'm just gonna get it wet get this wet normally you'd have something to dunk it in but i've only got this little pot at the moment and just rub it on here if you have take quite a lot to take off what you can do is you can take it all off with this and then you can pop it back in the microwave and do what they call fire polish so you start right the way i do it anyway you start right at the beginning again go through all the stages of how you got to this but you don't take it as far you can take it until it just starts to glow and what that will do is it will smooth out any parts that you've taken off um, and that you need to if you find it's you want to do it further like i said earlier you can basically put it back in the kiln and start right from the beginning again and just leave it to go longer than you did the first time so there we go right so bale so i need to decide what side size bale i want now these are quite can be quite shallow depending on how you've done it so i've got a selection of different bales so i've got some smaller ones these are all silver plated i use silver plated um just purely because that it's cheaper but sometimes i make ones with real silver it depends what people want so i've got different size bales now, the ones i've been using at the moment are these and they're really lovely they've got like a four five mil hole so they fit most chains cords 
everything. So I really like these. I get my beads from um, a local bead company, actually, a guy called Phil. He's absolutely lovely. And it's here in Devon. And it's called Bead Solutions. Co uk. Now the reason I mention him is because it's a, a little independent bead shop and he's got a website and everything as I said and you can get some of these, these bales from him and he's a lovely guy so I like buying stuff from him. So I'm opting for this one. Now what I normally do is because um, I like to put my mark on things I actually stamp it so um, I've got a couple of little metal stamps. One's got my initials on it and one's got my little symbol, which I don't know if you can see, probably not. So I literally get a block of metal. Obviously I'm a silversmith as well. So I have the advantage that I can mark things with my markers so sorry about the noise for a moment that's one and then my initials get them up the right way otherwise i'm tack not cat sorry about this there we go so <laughs> that didn't come out very well Duh. i'm obviously better at glass than i am at metal try that there we go so on the back of mine if you want to I've got my initials now and my little symbol which is to do with my company right put those away so what we're going to do now is that one of the most important things when you're actually gluing your piece up is you need to kind of rough up the area where you want to to put the bale so I am going to decide what way round I like this now it's quite a wide bale so I don't want it so it's kind of sticking up anywhere like this or like this because I don't want to be able to see too much of the back of it. So that looks nice there. It's a nice shape. Or let's find another straightish area. Actually that's probably the straightest part so I am going to go with that. Obviously it's up to you and if you did want to grind, you know, put a piece flat flatten that out just do it with one of these but I am happy with that so I'm going to go there so what I'm going to do is rough up the area where the bale is going to sit just by rubbing it with this you need to make sure that not only have you roughed up the back of your glass but you want to rough up the back of the bale as well or the bale part that's gonna sit so I don't know if you can you probably can't see that but it's no longer shiny in that little bit there then I take my my bale and I use this again or I've got files and I literally just take it down you'll see that this is uh, silver plated copper so it the copper comes out from underneath so wipe it all clean and dry okay you might be able to see that now so anyway so bail back of that now the glue I use is E6000 um, I've used so many glues over over the years super glue aral dye you know epoxy resin all sorts of things I actually find this really good and you get it in little tubes big tubes whichever I had a big tube of it but I've lost the lid and it started drying up that's really annoying so you want to put enough on that when you push the bale on, it literally squelches out the sides a bit. So lid back on the glue. And then you want to get your piece and position it where you want it. This glue normally you could kind of pick handle the piece within about 10 minutes. Um, and then I actually leave them in position overnight just so that I'm 100% sure that it's done at this point you can wipe if any of it gets onto the back of your bale just give it a little little wipe and you want to push it right on now I leave them to dry on a mat like this which was basically Ikea or somewhere um, plastic mat and I push it down 
and then I leave it bale side down so that it's got the, the weight of the glasses pushing towards the, the bale. And then that is where I leave it overnight and just let it do its thing. So the colours, you can see how that clear dichroic went. And we'll have a look at it on a cord when it's dry. Ooh. So this is our final piece. It's all glued up and it looks absolutely beautiful. The lighting, the way that that light shines off there is stunning. Well, I would say that I made it. <laughs> so that's the final piece. So hopefully if you have a go at that, you're going to come out with something that you really, really love. Um, if you've got any questions at all, please message me on my Facebook page and uh, I will hopefully be able to answer the questions you have. Oops. If I can't answer it, I will do my best to try and find out answers for you. And uh, there's loads of information on the Microwave Kiln Fuse Fusing Fanatics Facebook page. And um, yeah, just have a look at the files, ask questions and enjoy what you're doing. So thank you very much for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel because now I have my new little studio. I'm hoping to make more tutorials and that way you won't miss out. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye.